All right, so the next topic we're gonna talk about is coupled reactions. So um, we're talking about here more than one reaction at a time. And this is often the case in chemistry, right? It's not as straightforward as A going to B. There's usually other stuff going uh, on. So for example, if you have a reaction in which A is in equilibrium with B, and then B is in equilibrium with C, and if you know the K for A and B, and the K for B and C, you can find the overall K, right? K of kind of A and C. Uh, so let's take a look at an example of this. So for example, in this example, what we want to do is find K of overall, the overall reaction. Um, and so here's our overall reaction. We have two NH3s plus three I2s going to an N2 plus six HI. And then our K overall here, this is our K overall, and we don't know this value, right? This is what we're gonna wanna find at the end. So we'll leave that as a question mark. And then you're given some other data. So in this case, what you're given here is N2 plus three H2 going to two NH3. You're given this K, we'll call this K1 since our first reaction is 0 0.50. And then you're given H2 plus I2 goes to 2 HI. And we'll call this K2. And we'll say that this is equal to 50. And so there's multiple different ways to do this reaction. I'll kind of show you um, the way I think about it and kind of mix two uh, methods together. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to write our Ks, right? What are our Ks equal to? So we can write this K, right? It's always products of reactants taken to their coefficients. So in this case, it's N2 HI to the sixth over I2 to cubed over NH3 squared. And you want to write the Ks for all of these. So this K1 is going to be equal to NH3 squared over N2 times H2 to the third power. And then this K2 here will be equal to HI squared over H2 times I2. So that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing you want to do is you want to find relationships and relate the two. And so the way I do this is I always start left to right. So I take a look at what I want to know and I see the first thing I have is 2NH3, 2NH3. And then I look into my Gibbons and then I find where NH3 is given. And so in this case, it is given only on this right side. If you see it in multiple equations, just ignore it and go to the next thing in your equation. Um, and then hopefully it'll resolve itself. Or you might have to do some other tricks. It's really going to come down to practice. But anyways, back to this thing, right? We see here it's a reactant and here it is a product. Right, so we need to manipulate our givens to look like what we want it to look like. And so we need to flip this equation. The coefficient is okay, the two is okay, it just needs to be flipped, right? And so we need to flip. We need to flip the equation, right? And you can see the same thing here. Um, in this equation, NH3 is on the bottom. Whereas in this K1, NH3 is on the top. So that'll give you kind of a clue of how we're gonna flip it. So you can use uh, the stuff on the top here or I'll show you just a generic example of what happens when you flip something. So for example, if you have A to B, we'll call this K forward. This is gonna be products over reactants, right? So it'll be K concentration or it'll be B over A. And then when you flip this reaction, it'll be B 
to A, and so we'll call this K reverse, and now we'll have A over B, right? So to get from the top to the bottom, what we have to do is we have to take the inverse of this equation, right? So that, that means raising something to the negative one, right? So your K forward will equal to one over K reverse, or K reverse to the negative one. And so if we take a look at our equation, right, we're going to flip this guy right up here. So now we'll have 2NH3 going to N2 and 3H2. And we'll have to do the same thing for this value of K1, right? So we're going to take all of this, raise it to the negative 1. It's a terrible 1 there the negative one, all right? So we'll say K1 K1 to the negative one, right? So that's 0 0.5 to the negative one or one divided by 0 0.5. And so it gets a value of two. So we solved that part of the equation. Next up, we're gonna go to the next one. So here we see three I2. And so I look and try to find where I see I2. I don't see it in the first equation. I see it in the second equation. And it's on the right side of the equation, right? They're both reactants in both sides. And so I don't have to worry about anything there. But however, my coefficient isn't correct, right? Here it's a three, here it's a one. So what I need to do to this equation is I need to triple this equation to make it look like what I want it to look like. So we need to triple. And then if you look at your Ks as well, that'll also give you a clue, right? Here we see I2 down here and it's cubed. Here we see I2, but it's only to the first power. So think about how that, what that means um, that we're gonna do when we triple it. But uh, here's just kind of a generic example. If we have A in equilibrium with B, we can write K kind of one here, B over A. And then if we have different coefficients, something like AX to the X times B, right? We'll write this as KX. Um, then we're gonna raise it to that exponent, right? And so we can pull this exponent out in front or out to the side anyways, x. And so what we can say is that we're, that kx will be equal to k1 to the x power. So for example, we'll rewrite this equation, h2 plus i2 goes to 2hi. This keq, or call this K2, I think. K2 is equal to 50. Well, when we triple it, we go 3H2 plus 3I2 to 6HI. Well, this K2 is, we'll say like K2 times 3, right? Because we're tripling it. Um, what we need to do is we need to take K2 and we need to cube it. We need to raise it to the third power. So 50 cubed ends up equaling 125,000, right? So when you flip an equation here, you take the inverse. When you change the coefficient, you need to raise it to that power um, of whatever you did to raise it to that coefficient, right? And so you can get clues from your overall equations. The next step is that we need to sum our two manipulated equations, right? So we have this manipulated equation, and this manipulated equation, and we need to sum these two and ensure that it is equal to what we want it to be equal to. So let's check it out. So the first equation was 2NH3 with N2 plus 3H2, and we said this KEQ was equal to 2. And then we had 3H2 plus 3I2 is equal to 6HI. And then remember things that show up on both sides of the equation, we can cancel them out. And then we sum this up. We get 2NH3 
plus 3i2 goes to n2 plus 6hi. And if we take a look at our original equation, we have 2nh3 plus 3i2 goes to n2 and 6hi. That's exactly the same here. So this is exactly what we wanted. You always want to do this step because it's not always going to be um, kind of this simple of a problem. So we just sum the reactions. We have to think about what we're going to do to the Ks. And so when you sum reactions, you multiply the Ks. And I'll show you why. So right, we can say that this K overall is equal to our original K1 to the negative one because we took that inverse times K2 cubed because we tripled it. And so if we write the actual Ks for this stuff, right, we flip this one, so we'll have N2 up here, H2 cubed up here over NH3 squared. And then K2, when we triple it, we'll have HI to the sixth, H2 to the cubed, I2 cubed. And then these H2s will cancel out. And then if you actually go ahead and sum this, kind of multiply them all throughout, you'll get N2 HI to the sixth over NH3 times I2 cubed. And then if we go back up top, right, this is exactly what we wanted. Right, this is exactly what we wanted. And so then we can just take these numerical values that we got, right? So the K1 was 0.5. So we have 0.5 to the negative one. And then this one was 50 and it was cubed. And then if you go ahead and do the math, you get 2.5 times 10 to the fifth, which is overall a quite a large K. And so even though these two Ks weren't that big. The K overall is quite huge. And remember, big K means that we favor our products. And so you'll get a lot of products from this reaction. So um, I showed you kind of a, a bit of a complex way to do it. Um, you can do this combo version, or you can just kind of look at the reactants and remember what you need to do this side. Uh, probably the easiest ways is to just write out the Ks and think about what you need to manipulate these bottom Ks to get to your top K. Um, but really, it's just kind of practice, 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 um, and, and then you'll see. Oh, whoops, I forgot to write the third step was. The third step was to sum equations, multiply Ks.